Today I'm on Ruffle It and the goal is to practice the accordion effect which I just learned a few days ago by using this design as a reference for my site and just um, putting my own twist to it and this is from this user in Behance. So I'm going to start I guess. So the first thing I would want to do is give this a div, give it a class container and then in here I'm going to go to CSS and I'm going to target the container with a dot because that's how we target classes and I'm going to give it a border of five pixels solid black line border and then save that reload there we go I'm going to also give it a height of 100 VH save that reload to get rid of the spacing around the container I'll go to the body and just zero out any margin and padding that comes by default with um, some browsers including Chrome and I'll also add box sizing border box because that also helps with that all right so that's my container black box is going to contain everything so apparently there's another thing I think I'm going to call this I don't know the um I don't know, the accordion, I guess. So I'm going to go into HTML and inside the container, I know I'm going to keep things simple and just call it a card because it, it is essentially a card. And let's see. So if I go into here, CSS, I'll do card, select it, give it a border of, let's say, five pixels red solid. And then I would want to give it a certain height, so I'll probably do height, um, maybe 500 pixels. See what that gives me. All right, and so essentially I would want this to be in the middle also, and also to have kind of a width. So I'll probably give this a width of 600 pixels and save that reload. It's probably too small, so let's do... 800 and just play around with the values until I see what I want. I think that's fine. Um, it could be a little bit bigger though, but I'll fix it later. The point is that the card has to be in the center of the screen. So because the red box is inside the black box, I'm going to go to the black box, which is a container. I'm going to give it a display of flex. And then that's going to allow me to justify any content within the flex container, which is the red box to the center and that's going to move the thing to the right horizontally it's going to center it horizontally and then align items center is going to center the red box vertically so it's going to move it down right so now it's centered um, inside the black box um, it definitely has to be a little bit bigger so i'll just make it slightly bigger the card so maybe a width of 850 and maybe a height of 550. Maybe the width is what has to be a little bit bigger. So how about a width of 900? I think that's fine. And then obviously now I'm going to get into the border radius because you see that the edges are round, so I'll do a border radius of, let's say, 20 pixels, and let's see what that gives me. Definitely has to be a little bit more than that, so maybe either 40 or 30. Maybe that's too much, so maybe 30. Sure. All right. And then um, inside the card, we have a few things. So we have kind of like, um, like kind of like a few boxes. I'm thinking like two separate areas. So one is like the one at the top, the vertical thing at the top where it says the accordion, where it's like an H1 in a paragraph, and then kind of like a grid at the bottom. So I think I'll just separate the card into two spaces. And so I'll go into the card. And I'll do a div, give it a class of header. And that's going to contain, um, let me actually go to CSS, style it before I do anything. 
And by styling, I just mean give it a border. Blue. All right, reload. So that's the box in there. I'm going to give it, um, I'm not gonna give it a height for now. I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna do an H1. I'm gonna call it Ordian. Save that, reload. I'll be able to see that. And then there's a paragraph. So I'm gonna say, whoops, let me just close this. Um, I'll do a P tag and then I'll say this um, is day 455 of web development and day 80, what day is JavaScript, 82 of JavaScript and um, back to seeing the accordion effect which I recently learned on day, I don't know, hold up, um, day 78, 78 of JavaScript. Let's see if that's enough. I think that's fine. All right, that's good. Um, so that's the H1, that's one box. And then I want to do another box, which is going to contain all the, like, the views and the alerts and whatnot. So I'll go into index.html and um, I'll do another box. I'll call it div class content. Or actually, instead of content, I'll call it a grid because I'm going to actually make this a grid. And let me go to CSS and style it. And by style it again, I just can give it a border. So I'll do doc grid because it's a class and do something like green. All right, there we go. And it's gonna contain a few things. So it's going to contain, this is where it gets a little, uh, I need to think. Okay, so it has, a, it has an icon. It has an H1, a P tag, and another icon. So what I'll have to do is, um, first let me start, give it a simple class name, such as like a box or something. Um, even actually, you know what, it might just be nice if I just do a row, class row, and then inside that row, there's going to be an icon. So I'll do div, um, and I'll give this an ID, well no, I'll give this a class of icon, or yeah, I'll do icon, so that's one thing, and then I'll do another div. I'll give this a class of, well, it's an H1 actually. Um, I'm gonna leave it as views. And then it has a P tag also. So there's a P tag. I'm gonna say like lorem tab and then get rid of a lot of stuff here. And then it has another icon. So I'm going to do a div, I'm going to give this a class of, I don't know, plus sign. Or I could just do open, so that when I click on it, it opens and whatnot. Um, so yeah, but here's the thing though, um, when I do that, it just gives me that stuff and I need to make sure that this is... Um, properly set up. So what I'll do is I'll go into, let's see, the row. So the row also needs its own thing. So I'll do something like brown. So the grid has rows. And then there's also icons. So I'll do dot icon just so everything has a border and I see what's actually going on. I'll do something like purple. All right, um, what else do I have? So I have icon, h1, p tag, and then an open. So I'll also have open and I guess I'll just do something like um, orange. Save that and reload. All right, so these are like the boxes. I need to give them um, heights though. 
but I need to make sure I'm doing this correctly. So I basically need them all to be in the same row except the views and the p tag. Like the views and the p tag need to be like its own thing, like in their own divs. And so what I'll do, that means I'll go to HTML and then kind of put this in their own div. So I'll do class. Um, I don't know what to name it. I'm going to call it box right now. Just surround the h1 and the p tag in a box tag. Um, so in CSS, I'll do dot box. And what's I'm running out of colors. Um, I don't know. Um, great. No, uh, violet. All right, so that now it's perfect. So now what I can do is I could actually target the green box, which is which contains the purple, the actually no, the row. I have to target the brown box, which contains the purple, the violet, and the orange um, boxes. And I have to give it a display of flex. So I'll do display flex. And what that's going to do, it's going to put them all in the same row because by default, when you um, give a, a div or anything a display of flex it becomes a flex container and by default it has this property called flex direction that is set to row already so meaning all the items in that container all of the items in that brown box are going to be in the same row versus if I want them to be in the same column then I can say column and then they're, they're all going to be back at the t like on top of each other but um it's row by default, so that's why that works. So then here's the thing though. I see the views, I see the p tag, but obviously there's nothing inside the purple box and the orange box because I haven't set there to be anything in there yet. So I guess what I'll do in that case, um, I don't know. Let's see. I'm trying to think of like a theme that I could do. Um, maybe I can do this like maybe it could be like a like a syllabus type of thing so instead of um like views and alerts that could be like lesson one lesson two lesson three lesson four maybe so i'll do that maybe so i'll do like lesson one save that reload and i'll go to icons eight and find like a number one or something and hopefully there's a collection of them that look the same. Um, let's see. I might just take this one, but what if there isn't a two that's the same style? Because I need them all to be the same style. I'll do two. No, these are not the same styles, are they? They're not, they're different colors. So maybe that's not the best. Let me take a little break to think what kind of theme I want to go for here. I got it. I think I'll just do maybe like introductions to courses. I don't know. Um, I think I'll just search up like the Python logo. Okay, perfect. Yeah, this works. So I'll just do right click, copy image address, and then in CSS, I'll go to... Um, well, specifically, I can't just say, just set the background of icon to be that because there's going to be different rows. And so I'll give this an idea of like, um, icon one. So I can go to CSS and be like, hashtag icon one, which is how we target IDs. And then I can be like, okay, I want there to be a background or I want you to have a background. Um, and then URL and the paste that in there. And then I can save that, reload, and also make sure to give it a width of, let's say, 25 pixels and a height of 25 pixels. And also make sure to give it a background size of cover so that Python logo covers the entirety of its container, which is the icon one. So definitely make that a little bit bigger. So something like 55 and um, it's literally not letting me type right now.
55 pixels and 55 pixels. Maybe that's too much. Oh no, that's actually still too little. What if I do something like 90? At this point, it could just be like 100. Much better. All right, so that's the Python logo, and then I need like a plus sign. So I'll do, let's do plus sign. So something like this might be nice. It's kind of similar. Right click, copy image address. And then in this case, I do want to have all of the um, uh, opens to be the same image. So I can just do, I already have it selected up here. I could just do dot open and give it a background URL of that same thing. Save that, reload, and similarly just give it a width and a height and a background size of cover so that it actually appears. There we go. Although that might be way too big, so I'll probably do something like half of that. 50 pixels and then 50 pixels. Much better. Alright, and then there's a problem of like the alignment of these boxes inside the brown box, inside the row. They're all over the place. I want them to kind of be centered, right? So I'll just go to the brown box, which is the row, and I'll just do, well, I'm trying to think, right? So if Justify Content is horizontal and kind of works with the items horizontally, I really want them to be aligned vertically at the center. So I'll do Align Items, Center reload and there we go so now they're vertically at the center which is perfect and then another thing i would want to do is i would actually want there to be space in between all of these items so i might do justify content space between and see if that would work out but then it moves the pink box all the way to the center which is not necessarily what i want so i could there's also some other options let me look into them so i could do justify content space evenly and that's also not what i want and there's also space around which is also kind of not what i want um so let me see what I can do here. Um, I could do, if it's a display flex, let me save that, reload. I would want there to be spacing in between. I'm trying to think. I mean, I could do a grid gap. Not a grid gap, just a gap. Um, of like 2 EM, but then that's going to be for each and every single one of them and it's not what I want or I could just leave it like that and then I can manually take the um open where is it the open icon and I can give it a margin of from the left of like 50 pixels so that it moves to the right or not we could do 500 I don't know how far how much I need it to go that was close so 450 but then what that does though it presents another problem because it shrinks the uh the rest of the boxes as you see so this is an interesting problem so how i mean if i did this with grid it would have been easier to be honest i could do this with grid do i want to do it with grid is the question if I go and do this with grid, let me try it, it doesn't hurt to try. So if I just change this to grid, save that and reload, I can manually say how many columns I want. So I can say, okay, I want grid template columns, oops, grid template columns, which is basically how many columns I want. And I want three. So I'll do one FR, one FR, one FR. And that's just basically saying, hey, I want um, you to separate, I want you to separate my row into three equally spaced columns. So that's what 1FR, 1FR means. So it works in that way. And then what I can do in this case is how many rows 
I want and that's already one of um how do you say it one fr already because there's only one row um and then i can kind of control how much this is so if i want this to take off take up let's say two fr it's going to be longer but i still can't necessarily control how much maybe if i do four kind of play around with these values or something like five that looks fine but then here's another problem now i can't have the um oh yes i can hold up um there's this thing called place items no content center or is it place items center there we go but then it places the item center but then it doesn't recognize the fact that i want this to start at 5fr and to take up five i guess like more space than it needs so this is a problem let's see place i've never used place self um the first value is the align self property value. The second is the justify self one. If the second value is not blah, 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 blah. Interesting. So what exactly am I supposed to do? Center and then... So align, center. And then... What would be the default for default value in flex for um justify content flex start is it no that doesn't make sense i can't do flex because it's not flex it's not good can i use no i can't let me just search up documentation for place self. See what that actually does. Um, da -da -da -da, to align the individual item, blah, 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 blah. Oh, interesting. Oh, start. That's the equivalent. So let's try that. Um, let me reload. Uh, uh, uh. This actually doesn't work out either. What if I do center center still doesn't really do anything so center start hmm oh it says no it says individual item though So I have to, oh, okay. So can I just put these into the icon? And then also put it into the open? Because it's about an individual item. <gasps> oh my god. Not me learning new things. Wow, that was, that's actually, wow, that's amazing actually. I've never known about that wow or at least i never knew about that so recap of what i just discovered um place self wow so really i can do everything with just grid um place self focuses on individual items whether um i don't i don't know if, well i can't say if whether they're not whether in, they're in a grid or flex because i haven't tried it with flex but if they're if these items are in a grid um, container, a container that has a display of grid, which in this case the row has a display of grid, then if I want to align or justify a certain item or a certain box within that grid, I can't really do justify content center or align item center because it's not a flex 
container. It's a great container, but there's this thing called place self where I could actually place, no pun intended, into the um, item inside the grid. So for example, the purple box and the orange box are both boxes inside the grid container, which is the brown box, the row, and I can individually align them, right? Um, within the grid container, which is absolutely amazing. I never even like knew about this. This is amazing. So I guess though, I don't want them to be, um, I know that this one is a line at the center and then this one is justify. So this is vertical, this is horizontal. So, I mean, I know that if I just leave it as center center, it'll do that. Oh my God, this is like amazing. Wow. So you can really do everything with grid. Wow. I'm like appalled right now. That's amazing. Wow. Like absolutely wow. Like I'm, I think I'm going to cry. This is like amazing. All right. Anyway, this has a point. <laughs> Let's move on. Um... I'm not, like, I'm just like, wow, that's amazing. Honestly, I can't even, this is amazing. Okay. So, okay. In HTML, um, there also has to be content, right? So I have my row and then my content. So what I'll do is inside the green box, which is the, um, grid, um, There is a row, and then there is, um, well, there needs to be another box, but then those boxes would need to be inside another box, or maybe they don't, I'm trying to think. So maybe not, maybe I'll just put it in the same row. So I'll go into here and say something like a div, give it a class of content. And then inside the content, I'll just be like, I'll just put random stuff in there, like lorem tab, and then have it be that. Let me um, reload there. And it needs to have its own thing though. Um, so if I go to CSS and I do dot content, oh, the reason it's that way is because I set the row to have a display of grid, and so that means that the row actually needs to have now two rows. So I'll do grid template rows, one FR, one FR, basically 50%, 50%. So, uh, but that's actually really bad. Hold on. So not 50%, 50%. I want more like, how about I do like, 20%, 80%, much better. And then I want the, um, ooh, this would be a perfect use case for a, t uh, for a grid area because right now, this right here is only taking up one column because again, it's separated into 1FR, 5FR, and 1FR. So what I need to do actually is um uh, go to the content and give it a grid column started at 1 and I'm assuming if there is 1, 5, 6, 7, there's 7. So it's going to be 1 and 2. There's 7 columns, so that's 2, 4, six eight so it ends at eight outline eight so then now if i reload beautiful it's taking up the eight columns but then i don't know what it's doing all the way up there maybe if i add a grid things would be a little bit more easy to see so i'll do border i'm literally running out of colors what are colors i can't pink yes let's do pink Interesting. So maybe instead of 20%, I'll make this like 30%, 70. See if that's better. Or even 40%, 60. 
60. What does this thing want from me? 50%, 50%? Oh, that makes sense now because earlier it didn't make sense because, oh my god, of course, because the content was taking up so much vertical space, that's why it had to be bigger, but because now it's taking up all the eight rows, because it's again separated into seven columns, I'm sorry, all, taking up all the seven columns, um, it, it can be equally sized in row size. So perfect. Okay. Um, by the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, let me open this up in Firefox and you'll be able to see exactly like the rows and exactly what I'm talking about. Um, if I paste this in here and I'll do control shift I to open up developer tools, I'll be able to see over here in inspector, um, if I check on, let's see, if I go to the container, I go to the card, I go to the header, no, I go into the grid and I go to row and I click on grid, I'll be able to see the grid. Isn't that amazing? So I see I have one line over here, another line over here, and another line over here, and then eight. You can clearly see that there's eight, so line all the way up to eight. So that those are my grid rows, which is why Firefox is so amazing for like when you're working with grid. Um, and then clearly you see two rows, and so you do one two and three lines so if you want um that's why i said where, where, where was it um i went to the content and i said grid column one to eight so i basically told it hey i want you to start at the line one right column line one and end at column line eight so if i wanted to do something with a row and have it um have it end kind of in the middle or maybe actually no how it was right in, in the beginning it actually started at row two and ended at three Actually, no, that's how it is still. It's still at row two and ends at three. But in the beginning, if, if for column wise, the grid column was it and it started at one, ended at two. That's why it was all vertical. All right, that's it. I do feel like there needs to be so much more padding in the red box. So again, the red box is the card. So I'll do a padding of I don't know, thirty pixels. Reload that so it looks a little bit more fitting. Trying to see if that's how I want it even more. How about 40 pixels? Reload that. Oh, it's actually making the... Ah. Uh, interesting. And I need this to kind of just be a little bit smaller, to be honest. So maybe what I'll do is kind of resize things. So for the, let's see, where is it? The icon, I can do like 70 and then 70, right? And then where is the open? Open, I can do 30 and then 30 something like that and then the h1 which is inside um, the pink box or the violet box i don't even know anymore um i could just give everything a font size of like let's say 30 pixels that would be too much nope yep that's horrible 10 pixels for now i think that's kind of the format that this one has and then definitely the logo is way smaller. Yeah, so the icon is like, I don't know, 40 by 40. Mm -hmm. And I think that's good. All right. So then um, let me move on to copying these 5,000 times. So I'm going to go into HTML, I'm going to go to the row, and this is what I have to copy. Um, although, I'm trying to think, what has to be unique are these. But you know what? Um, I could just do that manually. What else can I, uh, I'll just go through them. So I'm going to select the row, 
and copy that and paste that how many times is this one has it has four so I'll paste that two more times so do oh and I just lost it okay copy that two three four save that and then now if I reload I'm gonna have four okay that might be way too big although it doesn't really matter because the pink boxes are not going to be showing up actually so what I'll do now is work on the JavaScript so the idea is that where is my CSS okay CSS the idea is that the pink box that's the violet the content is going to be hidden so it's going to have a display of let's say um, none so it's not going to be visible right and when I click on this little orange box, then it is going to be visible. Wait, why aren't the things aligned anymore? I just noticed something happened here. What just happened? Let me go to the brown box. What if I do place content center? Because now they're at the top for some reason. Is it place item center? Nope, definitely not that. And it's not content either. Because it's not, I don't know. So then what in the world is it? Is it, um, so place content. I don't even know what options. I'm just wondering why it's um so like upwards oh it's because the thing is hidden that's why mm. that's why that's interesting so what if i just give the row a padding from the top of like 20 pixels so that it goes down there we go mm -hmm. beautiful okay moving on um Okay, so the plan is when I click on the plus sign, I want the um, content to show up. So I'm going to go to JavaScript and I'm going to do a variable and I'm going to access the, well, actually, let me go to CSS first. I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to call it, um, active so when the box or the row is clicked on this active class is going to be applied to the content um, and that's just going to have a display of blocks so that when the box is clicked on if the box doesn't have the I'm sorry if the content doesn't have a class of active yet then it's going to add that class of active making it have a display of blocks making it appear but if it does it already have a class of active and I click on it again it's going to remove the class of active from the content and then it's going to make it disappear right because by default it's display none so then in JavaScript I'll have to make that happen by targeting the rows um, or I could target the icons because here's the thing um, I believe in my example the other day or when I was learning this what I did was I was following this kind of article um, and they targeted the row so basically when I click on the row the whole content shows up and if I dis disclick it what do you call it? unclick it <laughs> unclick it it disappears um, but the thing is this is when I click on the row so I can click anywhere in the row and that would happen but essentially then what are the what are the plus signs for, you know? Because even if I click on the plus sign, it works, right? So I have two options. Either I can target the rows um, and then have that be kind of like the the um, like the like trigger for having the content pop up, or I could just target simply the icons itself and have that specifically be the trigger for when the icons pop up. I think I'm just going to do, I'm not sure. Either way, it doesn't matter, but I feel like 
what would be like a user perspective i mean i'm thinking if i'm browsing websites do i really want to specifically click on the plus sign or do i can i what I, what I want to be able to just click on the row and have it pop up, you know? I think I would just rather click on the row, you know? And not specifically have to click on the plus sign. I feel like the plus sign is just like a visual of like, okay, of just telling me, hey, that I can click on this. But yeah, maybe I should study user interface or what do you call it? User experience or user interface, UI, UX, whatever. And that would tell me the answer. Um... But yeah, uh, let's go back into here. I guess I'll target the row. So I'll do a variable. And what I'll do is I want to have basically a list um, or a collection of the rows. And so I could do that because I gave each row a class of row. So I can target those classes. Um, and when I do that, it's going to actually return to me an HTML collection or an array. Um, for simplicity terms, I'm going to call it a list but it's literally not a list it's an array um but i'm just gonna call it a list because it's so much simpler to think of it that's that way um so i'll do a variable called row list and i'm going to set it equal to a list of the rows from my html which i'll have to actually access so i have to access those rows and the way that i do that is by using this variable called a document and so document is basically a your browser's copy of your html page so the reason why your browser makes a copy of your html page is because javascript is an object oriented programming language meaning javascript can only work with objects and your html elements including those divs that are your rows are not objects they're elements and so that's why your browser converts those elements into objects and puts them into this document called the document object model which you can access in javascript through the variable document so now javascript can actually work with those um, html elements because they're no longer elements they're objects so now the way you target them or access them is by using functions such as document dot get elements plural and we're using camel case meaning every word is a capital letter the beginning of the word class name so get elements by class name and then for me that would be row and then to check if that worked i can do console.log which is like if you come from python it's python's equivalent of just print um console.log and i can do um row list and then if i do save that and if i do control shift i to open up developer tools i'll be able to see that it returned to me an html collection which is basically an array of all of my rows so it worked so now I can just delete this because that was just a double check. And then from here, um, I need to create a function. Or actually, no. I need to iterate over my rows um, or the row list so I can access each row. So um, to do that, I'll need a for, for loop. So I'll do a for loop. Um, something like this. And so inside the for, I'll put some conditions. So I'll create a variable called like row count set that equal to zero and then i'll say as long as the row count is less than the row list length so however many rows there are in the list um as long as the row count is less than that then in continue increasing the number of rows and so what i can do now is i can target those individual rows and so i can say okay from the row list I want each individual row, so basically the row count. And then what I want to happen is I want to have it um, listen for something. So I want the rows to listen for when a certain event happens. And so that event is going to be when I click on it. So it's going to listen for when I click on it. And then when I click on it, it's going to pass or call this function here. And so this function, I'm going to say function and i'll put in parentheses and then just how i would curly brackets and then i'll say something like this which refers to the um the row count so i'm saying okay the row basically class list so i'm accessing the classes of the rows 
right? And so then after that, I'm going to use this thing called toggle. And then I'm going to put in the class that I want. And so for me, that's active. So what does that actually mean? Semicolon. Okay. So this means that I'm taking the row. I'm looking at the class list. If the class list, right, the list of classes, basically, let me go to HTML. What this is looking for is over here. The div class is equal to row. If it doesn't have a class of active, then what JavaScript is going to do is going to give it a class of active. If it does have a class of active, then JavaScript is going to take away the class of active. And what that does is active is just display block. So essentially, if um, the row doesn't have a class of active, which right now by default it does not, right? It just has a class of row. It's going to add a class of active to the row. And so really what I want to happen with that is that I want to target the content. So now I'll target the content. I'll be like, okay, doc active. And then I'll say, let's see, dot content and give it a display of block. So now I'm taking the class of active and then I'm saying, okay, whatever item or whatever element in HTML has a class of active, I want to access its content and give it a display of block, which I know that every row, right, has a content, right? And so when I say what JavaScript is doing is for the first time, it's adding a class. It's as if I was going to, it's as if I was going to do this. That's what JavaScript is doing for me. So it's adding a class of active when I click on it, and then it's basically saying, okay, active and then content display block, right? Because now it's targeting the class of active, it's targeting its content, it's giving it a display of block, right? And so basically what that's saying is whatever um, class is active and whatever content is gonna have a display of block, which is going to make it appear, right? Because by default, it has a display of none. So if I reload this, if I click on the plus, it works, right? So what that does, it's adding, right? Actually, hold up. I can do control shift I and I can see it actually happening over here. If I go to elements, let me go back to how it was. Let me go to the container, the card, the grid, the row. So right now, the div class row only has, let me zoom in, it only has a class of row. But if I click on it, it now has also a class of active. That's what the toggle does. It looks to see if it doesn't have a class of active, then it adds it. If it does have a class of active, when I click on it, it removes it, right? Just like it happened here. And again, what active is doing is essentially just giving whatever class, um, whatever element has a class of active and then the content, whatever you know, whatever content is inside anything that's has a class of active, it's giving it a display a block. And conveniently, each row has a content class. And so it's literally rewriting the display none into display block, making it appear, and vice versa when we click on it again. So that's kind of the idea. So um, same thing works if I add, let's see, whoops. If I do the other ones, so you'll see that this one has an active class now. And that's what the class list is. It just looks at the list of classes that your element has, which is super amazing, right? And that's literally it. So now onto the design, because this is so bad. Um, I think I'm honestly going to make a fork of this. I'm going to call this the intro, the instruction version because it has all the boxes and it's like easy to tell what's what. And then I'll just make a fork of this, which is a copy. And leave it like that, fork the REPL, and then style it. So the biggest problem I see right now is if I click on plus on these rows, what happens is that the content goes out of its box, outside of the card, outside of the container, the red box, the black box. So what I want to do is go to CSS and first target the black box, which is the container and give it a recommended minimum height of 100 bh because the reason why the container is not extending to the um, entire height of its content is because it has a set height of 100 bh so it's not going to go more than that that's why it's stopping like and halfway not halfway but 
um, over here. So what I'll do is set that to a minimum height. So that's the minimum height that it can be. So now it's going to reach towards the end of um, the thing. If I just do height minimum content and save that, reload. Hmm, interesting. Maybe that's because the card has to do the same. So I'll do the same thing for the card first. Give it a minimum height of 550 pixels and give it an actual height of minimum content so it reaches... Oh, it's because the boxes are not the actual content of the um, container, it's the red box. So when the red box extends, the black box extends, so that's the idea. So you want to give it a minimum height of 550 pixels, meaning it won't go less than that, but really, it really it's going to be always the height of its minimum content. So whatever the height of its content is, is like at the moment, that's what the height of the, the card, the red box is going to be. So yeah, that's kind of the idea. All right, so that fixes that, and then, um, ugh, I have to make this pretty. Great. Um, what color even is this? Is it like an off-white? Um, okay, let me go to the background, um, or even the container, and give it a background of that color. Save that reload okay and then I have to take the color of this oh it's pure white and go to the card give that a background right there save that reload okay and then I feel like it's more horizontal um it has a greater width so maybe I'll do a width of 1000 maybe and see what that gives me. Yep, I think that's better. Um, okay, and then let's see, if that's the case, then, oh, oh my god, no way. There's also horizontal lines, I didn't even see that. Let me add that right now. I'm just gonna do pure HTML with this. So it's after every row, right? So I have to take the row and just put in an HR there. Not an H1, an HR. Save that, reload. So now there's an HR there. Beautiful. All right, let me do one over here as well. So HR. Why does it keep... Oh my god. It's messing everything up. HR, let me just copy it. Paste it in here. And then... Where's another row? Paste that in there. I think that's all that I have to do. All right, there we go. Um, and then, um, what else do I have to do? Let me start removing the borders because I can't really tell what's going on with the borders. Delete the border of the container, of the card, of the rows, of the icons, of the other icons, the box, content, save that, and reload. Okay, that's what I have so far. Where, how did I miss the blue? Where are those? Oh, it's over here. Save that, reload. All right, so this is what I have so far. Um, definitely need to make this a little bit better and bigger also. Um, Let's see. Hmm. The font needs work. Let's see. I need this font then. So it's, let's see if um, Google has that. Hopefully. No, really? Really? Ugh, that sucks. Oh, it's an Adobe font. Uh, I have an Adobe account. I could just... Okay, I'm so confused right now. What just happened? I didn't even do anything. Okay, um... 
Okay, so it said Pro 400, so that's the regular. So activate font. Font activation successful. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, can I just, um, how exactly do I, can I not take it? Um, I'm so confused. Trying Adobe Express. I don't want to try any Adobe Express. I just want to, like, use it, you know? <laughs> like, what is this? Um, nope, that's not what I want. Um, can I not download them? Copy? Do anything? No? Well, that's great. How to use, um, blah, 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 desktop, oh, thank god, okay, there we go, beautiful, I was like, where is the CSS? Alright, so back over here, this needs to be the font for, um, what's the font for this one? Oh, they're all the same fonts, okay, beautiful, so I'll just give everything the same font then. So I'll go into here in the body and paste that in there. Oh, wait, no, because then, oh, actually, wow, it does a good job in knowing what to do. Beautiful, actually. All right, put that in the body. So then that happens. Definitely have to make these things a little bit better. So lesson one needs to like not be bold or maybe not that bold um eh, maybe it's fine the p tags though have to be way bigger than they are right now so i'll do dot what even the p tags are inside the box right so i'll do dot box where is the box okay font size delete that and I'll do dot box, p tag, give it a font size of 15 pixels. Save that and reload. And that makes things much nicer. Oh, this is really ugly. <laughs> Why is it like that? Honestly, I like the way that it is right now, though. Um, I just need to put these things in the middle because for some reason... Burn on? I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Like, why is that the why is that the case right now? Um, if I go back to the row, if I delete the padding, would that help? No, I like the padding. Um, what would help though? Um, again, I tried doing place content. Can I do align content? Oh, that's probably what I should have done. Align content center, and then it could be, but align item center wouldn't work. That's, oh, bro, what? I mean, okay, I guess. I mean, sure, I don't even know at this point. All right, apparently align item center. Yeah, vertical, okay. Moving on, let me make the icon a little bit bigger, so something like 50 pixels, um, 50 pixels. Save that, reload, oh no, um, let me think, icon 1, 50 pixels, 50 pixels, let me give it a border to see what exactly is going on. Save that, reload. Then why in the world is it doing that? I'm telling it background size cover. That's weird. What? Now it's fine? So confusing. Alright. What if I do 80 pixels, just how I kind of had it before? Ooh, that's so ugly. 
How about 65? 65. Much better. Alright. Um, oh, now I understand. I was like, I was thinking that this year was part of, um, this. Um, what exactly to do here? Um, let me think. Because when... I don't know, I think I would want it not to be like that. I want it to kind of be in the same... row same column as this so you know what i'll do i'll go to the row and or maybe not i'll go to the content and instead of grid column of one to eight maybe i'll do like two to eight or three to eight so it goes to the right grid column four to eight. Oh, that's ugly three to eight what is going on? Let me open this up in grid to see what's going on. Reload. Okay, so control shift I. Um, if I look at the container, look at the card, look at the nope, with the grid, the row, open this up, and I take a look at the grid. Where's the grid? Over here, check that on. All right, what I'm seeing, oh, I need it to be from two to three. That's what it is. So I need it, I need this over here to be from two to three, not from three to eight. So two to three. Oh, why didn't I think of that? Beautiful. Okay. Call, this is why fire, you need to get Firefox. Okay. Um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then the one other thing I would need to do is to make this kind of like a grayish color. So let me take my color picker. Eh, it's kind of hard to get a, a nice color. All right, and then I'll go to the P tag and change the color to be that color. So it's like a grayish. Okay. Um, and then I don't want there to be so much spacing in between the these two. Um, so let me see, between the H1 and the P tag in the box, I don't want there to be so much spacing. So I guess I'll just do margin bottom from the P tag so it goes a little bit more upwards of like, I don't know, 20 pixels. Oh no, that wouldn't actually work. Margin from the bottom, margin from the top. Hmm, not really. What if I do 50? Nope, definitely not. What if I do negative 20 pixels? Much better. So let me do negative 10 maybe. And then... The font size could be just a tiny bit bigger, maybe 17. I think that's good. Um, and then let me get a few more icons. And maybe reduce on... Let me put some spacing in between the accordion and then the actual... I mean, the literal accordion h1 and then the actual accordions um so if i remember correctly it's they're inside the red box which is the card and i have a grid and a header so i guess what i have to do with the card is i could give it a display of grid so that when i resize them well they're already resized enough as it is Maybe I could just say, give things like a margin of 10 pixels. Hmm, or maybe not. Oh yeah, no, not the card. Oh, it's gonna make it smaller, that's why, okay. What exactly do I wanna do? 
um, you know what? Let me just target the header, right? So I'll do the header and give it a margin from the bottom of like 10 pixels so it goes a little bit more to the top. What the heck? <laughs> what the heck? 20 pixels? There we go. So it's slightly going to the top. How about 40? Okay, I was like, what in the world is happening? All right, much better. Um, then I do notice that the accordion is also aligned a little bit to the right. So I don't have a grid for that. So that's going to be a problem. Um, so what I could do actually is just honestly give it a margin from the left of like, I don't know, 20 pixels so that it moves to the right and it's kind of aligned. There we go. Beautiful. Isn't that amazing? Um, and then the HR, which is the horizontal row, needs to be... First of all, it needs to end within um, the grid. So I think what I'll do is maybe go to index.html and put it inside. Well, do I really want that to happen? I could put it inside here. Put that there. Save that reload. Oh, never mind. Wrong thing to do. Never mind. Mm -hmm. I just need to control the width of it. So I guess I'll just go here and be like HR and do, I don't know, make up a width. I don't even know what the width of the card is. What was it? The width of the card is 1000 pixels. So, but what's the width of the grid? Because that's, oh, I don't have a width. It's great. Um, or the width of the row, I don't have that either. Mm, that sucks, okay. What if I do 300 pixels, is that gonna be too little? Yep, okay, how about 500? Also too little. What if I just do 800? Mm, how about 780 pixels? Much, much, much. Oh, never mind. So it's not responsive. That's really annoying. Um, so yeah, how about 950? But then it's not, it's definitely not responsive. Yeah. Maybe I should leave it as it is. I'm not sure. And then not only that, but I want the color to change as well, to like a grayish color as well. How do I change the color of an HR? How to change color of HR? No, not H2. HR. No. Oh my god. Oh, border? Oh, or is it the background color? And then give it a border of none. Oh, I'm so confused. Is it disappeared now? Well, now it has no border. I could give it a height of uh, three pixels. No, yes, two, one. Okay, that works beautiful. And then get rid of the width. Oh, no, you know what? It's better to have the width, to be honest. I'm just going to leave the width there. Okay, so that's looking nice, right? <clears throat> and I think that's good. Let me look at some other stuff. That I could do. So I'm gonna do Python. Let's see, SQL. I'm just gonna put random languages. I don't even know what I'm doing. Um, not Java, not SQL. Let's do JavaScript. I just don't know what themes I'm going for. It's a programming theme apparently. 
So I'll do right click, copy image address, and then I'll go into HTML and I'll go to where they say like icons and then icons and I'll just give them their different icons. So two, three, and then four. And then CSS, I'll just um, copy the one for icon one, like four times, right? Or three times. And then take this link, just go and change this to icon two and replace the URL. Um, maybe while I'm at it, do icon three and icon four. So I don't know. Um, what's another language? Um, well, not, okay, let's do CSS. Um, I'll take this one, right click, copy image address, make that icon four, and I'll do HTML. And um, let's see, take this one, right click, copy image address, make that icon three, save that, and reload. Okay. And then I'll go into index.html and just um, change the h1s. So I'll do h1, I'll call this one, let's say, JavaScript. No, that's Python. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, no, yeah, this is JavaScript with icon 2. Icon 1 is going to be Python. Um, and then let's see. Icon three is going to be HTML. And finally, icon four is going to be CSS. Okay. There we go, beautiful. And then the last thing I would wanna actually work on is the plus sign. So I want it to become a minus sign when I open it up. So that's gonna be another JavaScript type of thing. So I'll go into here, search for like, um, <coughs> A minus, a minus sign, uh, maybe something like this actually. And I'll right click, copy image address, and then go back into my stuff and I'll go to JavaScript. And so I'll create another function, I guess. So I'll target the, um, um, let's say the open list, because they are open. And that's going to be document dot get elements by class name. I did give them all a class of open because it's what I'm going to use to open them. And um, let's see. Actually, you know what? Hmm. I'm trying to think. Can I, I don't have to do this. I can just go to CSS and I can be like, okay, I want there to be dot active dot open, change the background URL to this. Save that and then delete this. Let's see if that works. Nope. And that's because I have to reset the um, the background size also. So I'll do, where's the open? Let me delete this. I don't need that over here. So apparently what I've learned in, in all of this is that every time I like change something, with JavaScript, it kind of like deletes the rest of the stuff. So I have to like re-say or restate the same CSS properties. So I guess I'll just paste that in there, save that, reload. And now if I do plus, it still doesn't show up. Isn't that great? Let's see, is it because the image is wrong? Because I'm basically saying I want whatever element is active, right, the row. I want the open to change its background, right? So I want it to have, um, a new background. Why is it so hard to 
I mean, I literally did it the other day, but I did it differently because I did, like, text content. Hmm. That's interesting. So it works with the plus sign, but it doesn't with the minus sign. I'm confused. What about this one? Copy image address. Paste that in here. Save that. Reload. Ah, so it did. Oh my god, thank god. So it was just the image. I guess the wrong link or something. Um, but yeah, it works now. Beautiful. So really what I just told us to do. This is amazing. Like, I don't even have to write so much JavaScript. I only had to do this once. So basically, I can activate a whole bunch of things just when I click on one certain thing. Um, just by, like, adding classes and adding, like, basically different situations. So not only when I click on the row, does the display of the content become, go, or does the display of the content go from being none to block, but it, but also the open um, elements that have the class of open, which are these little plus signs, also change their background, and then I have to restate, you know, the properties, um, the, the, the rules, the CSS rules that were there so that they appear. I would, though, make this a little bit bigger, something like 40 pixels, 40, that kind of matches up, mm, that may be too big, so 35, 35. All right, I think that's good. And um, I might change the accordion to say something else. So I could say um, languages. Whoops. Where did my stuff go? Oh. So now if I reload, it says languages. Okay. Python, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and then I have my little accordion, so, wow, really proud of this, honestly, it's really nice, really proud, um, only thing is, though, not responsive, so how exactly would I get it to be responsive, well, if it was a grid, I could make it responsive, um, if I just make the, um, let's say, I know that my card holds everything, so I can maybe make this, give this a display of grid, and say something like grid template columns, so that it has like one column, right, but then it has like grid template, well, it's going to be auto, so let me do this again, reload, and then now, Let's see, if I do this, how would I want, how would I get it to shrink? I guess it doesn't do much, too much of a difference. I guess I would just say that the card can have a certain, like, width, or the, at least the screen. Hmm, so that makes, oh, I know why, because I did give the card a certain width, that's why. So if I delete that, and I reload, and if I do this now, let me see. Hmm. Is it because I also gave it a minimum height? Height of 550 pixels. Well, I guess it's a problem for another day, but it doesn't really make too much of a difference. So let me delete this not make it a display grid and just leave it as it is and i'll worry about responsiveness some other day <laughs> um oh yeah i did make it bigger right all right um but yeah that's it for today a little bit of accordion practice oh my god it's not wait <laughs> it's an actual instrument i did not even mean literally no pun intended like actually accordion practice that's a good one anyway I'm going to go now. Bye.